Do you know how all, how much, though? I mean, do you have a price tag for, for all this? We do. I mean, you know, and, and uh, the, the price tag is it will be substantially less than letting the current system go. I think it's about $30 trillion. That's just for Medicare for all? Just, just Medicare about. for all. Yeah. Do you have a, a price tag for all of these things? No, I don't. We try to. No, you mentioned making public colleges and universities tuition free and canceling all student debt. That's correct. That's what I want to do. We pay for that through a modest tax on Wall Street speculation. But you say you don't know what the total price is, but you know how it's going to be paid for. How do you know it's going to be paid for if you don't know how much the price is? Well, I can't, you know, I can't rattle off to you every nickel and every dime, but we have accounted for it. You, you talked about Medicare for all. We have options out there that will pay for it. One year ago this week, Medicare for All was introduced as a way to replace most private health insurance with a national single-payer system. Joining us now is the chief sponsor of the bill, member of the House Judiciary Committee and Health Policy Chair for Senator Bernie Sanders' presidential campaign, Democratic Congresswoman Pramila Jayapal of Washington. Great to have you on board this morning, The Washington Post. Bob Costa has the first question for you. Bob? Congresswoman, good morning. Good morning. In Senator Sanders' interview with CBS, he talks about a modest tax on Wall Street speculation as a way to pay for Medicare for all. Who specifically would be taxed in that scenario? Well, if you did it on Wall Street speculation, then obviously the people who invest in the stock market and make enormous amounts of money off the stock market would be paying that tiny financial transactions tax uh, on their financial transactions. And I think the thing here to think about is that we have a healthcare system that literally causes people to die. We have a healthcare system where people are paying 10 times more for insulin in the United States than they do in Canada. We have a healthcare system where 500,000 people every year file for medically related bankruptcy, uh, bankruptcy because of medically related costs. So this is untenable. The system as a whole will cost us $55 trillion over the next 10 years. So the question here becomes, why would you protect the status quo? And how do we make sure that every single person has universal care? In the last year since I've introduced the bill, we have had a historic four hearings in the House of Representatives. We have over half mm -hmm. of the Democratic caucus, including top leadership. We have 30 unions that have sponsored the bill, an incredible racial justice coalition, because people understand that we have to imagine a different kind of guaranteed government provided insurance program that will allow everyone to get health care. No co-pays, private insurance premiums or deductibles. If Senator Sanders is elected president, would Democrats like yourself accept an incremental uh, application in pursuit of Medicare for all, perhaps just going after, to your insulin point, the negotiation of pharmaceutical drug prices rather than just demanding this whole program wholesale? No, here's the problem, Bob. If you try to keep the private insurance companies in the marketplace, what you do is drive up costs. The whole problem with our healthcare system today is that it has started to put profits over patients. We have a system where 30% of our entire healthcare costs in this country are actually going to administration. And that is uh, really ways to keep people from getting health care and provide big CEOs with huge paychecks. But it's not providing people with health care. So we have to fix that underlying problem or you do not bring down costs and you do not provide universal care for everyone. So when we look at the interest, entrance, entrance poll data around the Nevada caucus, or primary, I'm sorry, uh, it showed that uh, Bernie Sanders won among those voters who were most concerned right. about health care. Right. When you look at what happened uh, in Nevada, how, what are your takeaways? Well, my takeaways are that it was a fabulous night and actually a fabulous election so far for Medicare for All. As much as the private insurance companies and even some TV pundits have you know, been criticizing Medicare for All and some Democratic candidates, the reality is that voters understand that this system does not have to be, that we can get a different system that provides them with health care. And because health care is the number one cost uh, for, for Americans across the country, Bernie Sanders is saying exactly what they know to be true, that we need to fix the health care system, transform it from the bottom up, and that they need to be able to have health care because the situation is untenable. Karen. 
So what do you say to people who um, say, hey, I, I like my private insurance plan. Uh, I, I work for a large employer. It's relatively inexpensive. It's, it's relatively a simple system. So what do you say to people who don't yeah. want to give up their, their private insurance plans? Well, I would just say, first of all, that nobody likes their private insurance plan. What they like is their doctor. And if you look at all the polling, when people are asked if they want to give up their private insurance, the support goes down a little. If you take the next question, which is if you could keep your doctor, but you were going to have to give up your private insurance plan, the support goes up even higher, including among independents and Republicans. So what people want is health care. And the current plans, the employer provided health care, even if you're lucky enough to have that, you are seeing costs increase dramatically. It is why unions have come on board to Medicare for all, because they see the direct connection between wage stagnation and rising health care costs. And what choice do you really have if you have an employer covered plan? Your employer chooses the plan. Your insurance provider decides what benefits and what doctors and hospitals you get to see. That's why we have all the horrible surprise billing that's happening across the country. And if you lose your job or if you're too sick to go to work, you've got no health care at all. So I think this is a red herring to say that these plans provide choice. What really provides choice is to guarantee insurance for all Americans so that whether you're in one job or the next, you keep the same plan, yeah. the same doctors, and you actually actually get to have lower costs and not be providing, you know, not be in that situation where you're dying. W one more thing I want to say here, there was a fabulous study that just came out published in The Lancet, very respectable medical journal, um, and it was done by the director of infectious diseases at Yale University. She estimates, or those researchers estimate, that Medicare for All would save over 68,000 lives and save $450 billion annually. Medicare for all who want it would actually cost us right. more and not cover everybody. So we're way in deep on the argument here, but Bob Costa, um, talk about what would have to happen in the House and the Senate. Um, and what are the chances this can become a reality? And then you can take it to the Congresswoman. It's a great question, Mika. And as someone who covers <laughs> Capitol Hill, it's clear that if the Republicans retain control of the Senate and Senator Sanders is elected president. It would be very difficult for him to enact his Medicare for All program because of the way power is structured in Congress. Senator Sanders has responded to questions about this by saying he will lead a movement across the country holding rallies and events to try to convince people to come around his idea. But there is going to be a question, if Sanders is in the White House, about whether he could accept something like a public option, whether Sanders, by moving the whole party to Medicare for all in a divided government scenario, would need to come to the center. This is a deeply divided country. But Senator Sanders is convinced also, and his allies are, that this is a populist age and that people want to see radical change, not just incremental change. Congresswoman, uh, the, the potential for this to become a reality, uh, it, it certainly has huge challenges. Do you uh, agree? Absolutely. It has huge challenges. Nobody's not saying it does. But in order to provide universal health care for everyone, we have to be willing to take on those challenges. And I will just say this. Winners beget winners. Nobody thought that Donald Trump would be able to do the things that he has done and move the Republican Party in the way that he is moving it. We are talking about moving the Democratic Party, moving the country to an economy and a system, a health care system that works for everybody. And I believe that that will be significantly easier the minute that Democrats understand and, and really everybody in the country understands that changing our health care system is not just a nice thing to do. It is necessary. And we just have to imagine it, believe it. And then I believe that we can make that happen. Congresswoman Pramila Jayapal, thank you very much for coming on the show this morning. Thank you. And coming up, someone who knows a thing or two about running for president, former 2020 contender Senator Kirsten Gillibrand is standing by and she joins us straight ahead on Morning Joe. Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories and you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.